Hi everyone, let's quickly have a look at the vehicle that I'm going to use for my Namibia trip 2017. It's another three days before we go and I have bought myself a Mitsubishi Pajero uh, with a lot of kilometers, very second hand, a lot of kilometers on the clock. Only modifications I've done to it is I've fitted BF Goodrich tires, a front runner roof rack with a front runner water container. The reason why I took the front runner water container is because it fits 100% onto the roof rack. No modifications whatsoever. It holds more than 40 liters of water and water is one of the most important things going to Namibia. Now when it comes to water that is probably the next most important thing in your entire planning and I have fitted a front runner water tank to my vehicle but on my previous trip I used this canister which you can buy from your local supermarket and the problem with this is you've got this tap that is exposed and the chances are that this tap can get broken off and you lose all your water. So that is the biggest problem that I had with this type of container. It worked for us. We used this container for about three years. We never had a problem, but I took particularly care to not break this tap off because it's only mounted in the plastic of the, of the container. There's no reinforcement here. So um, this, this works, it works well. This one takes 25 liters. You need approximately a liter per day per person. So this would have helped us for about three days. The new one I fitted to the vehicle, uh, which I will show you when I show you the preparation for the vehicle, is a front runner 45 liters which will give us, we four per people in the car, which will give us a couple of more days if we run out of, uh, or if we pick up problems, uh, then at least we've got enough water um, available. Um, I'll show you the roof rack I've put on with a front runner uh, water tank, which is mounted, which reduces the chances of a tap breaking, breaking off. And then, of course, that one's got a nice pipe that runs along the rail, which is tied down. So um, it's easy to decant water. Um, where this one I used to put on the back flap of my Isuzu, and then it was convenient. But the transport of this was a major risk for us. Uh, and it bothered me a lot because I knew if that tap breaks off, my water is gone. Now as far as the Pajero goes, the reason why I bought it, as I've always liked Mitsubishi. It started with a forklift. I was working at Nissan uh, in their parts department and we had a couple of forklifts uh, of which one was a Mitsubishi and well everybody preferred the Mitsubishi and you know, I always wanted one, but what happened was I actually went, went to look at a Isuzu because I had the Isuzu 2.8 uh, turbo diesel. Uh, I know it's a very reliable vehicle, and I wanted a Isuzu Frontier, which is basically a van version of the pickup or the bucky. And looking, we went to look at a second-hand one, and when we got the uh, Isuzu was very second hand and us, you know, the gearbox was leaking, well they made modifications to the exhaust and the wiring was up to maggots and, you know, I just wasn't, I didn't have time or the willpower to go and fiddle with the gearbox and replace the clutch and things like that, so, and we couldn't get to a price because I figured, well, if I can get a couple of thousand rand off on the price, you know, I can take the car in and tell a guy, listen, yeah, start at the beginning and do it right through to the end, um, which I couldn't, we couldn't get to a price. So on the same floor, 
this Pajero was standing there and I looked at the price, well, at first I didn't even look at it because I knew it was way out of my price range and you know losing interest in the Isuzu I started looking around walking and I walked in front of this Pajero and I looked at the price and I thought you know what it is more than the Isuzu but it's a lot m more vehicle for the price I get a lot more vehicle for the price so I decided I'm going to take the Pajero I'm a bit weary about the electronics and the fancy gearbox it's got in the super select as they call it you know but I've taken it on a couple of trips and I'm I'm happy I'm, I'm impressed I mean it makes the route a lot shorter a lot shorter than what you had with the Isuzu because with the Isuzu comfortable speed is about 110 kilometers an hour with the Mitsubishi 130 easy no problem fuel consumption is a bit on the heavy side but not heavy it's heavier than normal you know that I'm what I'm used to the Isuzu used to give me about 11 kilometers uh, on a liter of fuel this one gives me about between seven and nine uh, kilometers so it's not that much heavier uh, I do ride faster yes that's true um, so you can expect the bigger fuel consumption now we've got us another three days before we go to Namibia of uh, probably the last video I will upload before we go and uh, um, I will tell you exactly what work, how the vehicle performed. Um, I am not the type of guy that's going to get it into ridiculous positions. Um, I mean, I, I don't have a sponsorship, so I've got to pay for whatever I break, which makes a big difference. So this is going to be my uh, last video before we go. Uh, the rest will obviously come after we get back, which would be January 2018. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe so that you know when I upload the next video. And share this with your friends. I'm sure somebody would like to join you on a trip like this. Till next time. Bye-bye.